Hello, my name is Ian Shepherd. I'm a mastering engineer and I run the Production Advice website, where my goal is to help you get the best results recording, mixing and mastering your music. And Rob has asked me to do an introductory video for you. This is a uh, a demonstration that I do, I go around the country talking to people at colleges, to students, um, doing a talk called Mastering Essentials, where I try and introduce them to the basic concept of mastering. And afterwards I do a workshop where I take songs that the students have recorded and mixed, uh, and I show them how you can master them using only EQ and limiting. Now, that might sound strange to you. You might have heard that mastering is compression and stereo width enhancement and saturation and tape emulation and all kinds of other stuff. But I believe that at its core, mastering is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Uh, back when I was originally taught to, as a mastering engineer 20 years ago, I started out using just EQ and limiting. And those two fundamental processes with some helpful concepts I think are really going to help you get a grip on the benefits of mastering, what you can and can't achieve, uh, and maybe get you started or help you if you've already tried mastering your own material and you want to take it to the next level. So I've got three songs that were submitted by you guys. Uh, let's take a look. So here they are in Wavelab. We've got three songs. We have a track called Hide by Nikolaus Pangazidis. Healing by Patrick Jakubowski and New Wave by Peter McDonough. And you can immediately see just from looking at the waveforms that we're going to have to even out the levels. Um, so that's where I'm going to start. Uh, I'm working here in Wavelab, but the strategies I'm going to teach you here are going to work in any digital audio workstation. Uh, there'll be slight differences in the way that you apply the plugins and the effects. But let me start by quickly playing a bit of each song so you can hear how they sound as they've been supplied. So, a really varied selection of tracks, as you can hear already. Varied in terms of genre, and also in terms of sound, in terms of level and EQ. And that's what I'm going to show you how to improve and how much benefit there is to that process. So, the first thing to show you is that I have a limiter on the output, on the master output section. I'm using the FabFilter Pro L, which is uh, very popular and... I think it does a really good job. I'm going to put it on the punchy preset as a starting point. Other details to tell you are that I have four times oversampling enabled and I've set the output ceiling to minus one dB with intersample peak detection enabled. That is to improve compatibility with mastered for iTunes and streaming in general. Um, and I've also got a dB of gain there going into the limiter. I don't tend to apply gain at the limiter. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, but any high quality digital limiter that you have is going to do a good job. The other plugin that I'm using straight away that I need to show you is the VU meter, the VUMT. There's not really time to go into it in a huge amount of detail in this video, but I still really like using a VU meter to judge my loudness. Uh, and I have it calibrated here to minus 11 dBFS. And I'll show you how that works as we move on. So let's start by playing a bit of the first song. We'll just kind of jump in somewhere. And of course the level needs to come up. Now Wavelab gives me 6 dBs of gain on the clip, but that's not going to be enough. So I'm actually going to add a specific gain plugin to the clip. Uh, there's one in Pro Tools called Trim. 
there's a utility in Logic. Most DAWs have the ability to do this if you don't have enough gain actually on the clip. And I'm going to use this plugin to lift the gain up so that the VU meters calibrated at minus 11 are hovering around zero. So that's step one. Now I'm going to do the same for the other two songs. The reason that I do this first is that loudness affects the way we hear sound. So in fact, if I just bypass that game plugin and play you that song again, listen to the way that it sounds at the lower level and the higher level and see what you think the differences are. I don't know about you, but the first thing that I notice is that I'm hearing a lot of really high top in the song when it's louder that I hadn't immediately noticed when it was quieter. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. As we turn music up, our ears or our brains make us feel like we're hearing more bass and treble. You know, there's no EQ on the song. Nothing has changed except that it's getting louder. If I turned the volume control on my speakers down, it would sound the way it originally had. We haven't changed anything in the music, but just increasing the level makes it feel brighter and bassier. I haven't noticed that so much with this song, but typically you hear more bass and more treble. This is an effect that was described first by Fletcher and Munson way back. You might have heard of the Fletcher-Munson curves, also known as the smile curves. Uh, these days they're called equal loudness curves. It's, it's a fact. It's a thing that drives the loudness wars. Nobody knows why quite. It could be that the, the saber-toothed tiger breathing down your neck is more important to pay attention to than the one way over there in the distance, uh, stalking a herd of gazelles. So our, our brain makes sounds that are louder and probably closer, more important and interesting to us. Uh, but it's a factor. So when we're judging EQ, before we make any decisions about EQ, we need to get the loudness right first. If you think about it the other way around, if we set the EQ up and then turn the loudness up, the process of turning the level up changes the way that we hear the EQ and we'd immediately have to tweak the EQ again. So stage one, get the levels similar. You don't have to use a VU meter for this. You could, I mean, you can just use your ears, obviously, uh, but you could also use a loudness meter like this one over here. And the most important thing is that the songs are all of a similar level. Exactly how loud you master your music is going to be a matter of taste and will depend on the final goal you have in mind and what your reference tracks are. Another useful tactic that I don't really have time to go into in this video is bringing in your reference tracks and adjusting them to your chosen loudness level when you start balancing EQ. But that's why I like the simplicity of just recommending a VU meter minus 11. This, this plugin is super affordable. It's made by a company called Klanghelm. Uh, it's the VUMT, the Klanghelm Vumped. How could you not love a plugin called the Klanghelm Vumped? And there are plenty of other VU emulation plugins out there. You do need one that you can calibrate, though. So let's do the same thing for the other two songs. <laughs> For the time being, I'd say that song is about right. You can see the needles are pushing right up at some points. That's because there's so much bass in the signal. I'm comfortable with that for the time being. Track three. So now let's just listen again and compare those three songs. Now the levels are better balanced. Now 
Now there's an immediate interesting fact. Track 3 sounds a lot louder than the other two because it has a lot more upper mid-range energy in it. Again, I'm going to leave that for the time being because the EQ that I'm going to use is going to help address that, but I'm predicting we're going to turn that song down a bit compared to where it is currently, but we'll stick with the meters for the time being. I'm going to increase the level of track one a little bit more so that it sits better with the other two songs. you can hear that those songs balance each other better just by having evened out the levels. Let's just remind ourselves how they sounded originally. And before we go any further, let's just check in and see what that limiter is doing on the output. So we've got less than a dB of gain reduction on any one of those tracks. I'm very comfortable with that as a starting point. So now we can start to think about EQ. I'm actually going to... The, the song that I'm hearing the biggest need for EQ straight off the bat is this kind of punky, rocky one at the end. So let's start there. Again, I'm going to use a FabFilter plugin. Pro-Q has a really nice interface and is very popular. And I think the first thing that I'm going to do is lift up the bass of this track. I don't want to go too far with that. It's meant to have a tight, aggressive sound to it. That may already be a bit too much, but the next thing I'm going to do is soften that upper mid-range because although it wants that aggressive, punky sound to it, for me, it's a little bit too harsh. I'm also noticing on the meters up here and hearing the left hand channel seems a little bit louder to me than the right. So I'm actually going to tweak that. So I'll add an extra plug in in here. I mean, there are all kinds of ways of balancing left, right image. I'm just going to use a stereo tools plugin that comes with WaveLab. I'm just going to knock the left channel down by a dB, see how that sounds. This is how it might have been as far as never was. But it's the time for a restart. Are we going to check it out soon? Pay grace, fire like you're okay. Wanna start a riot? Better 
probably noticed there that I was also using one of the nice little features of the VUMT. This is the deluxe version. Um, we can mono the signal, we can listen to the side signal, the difference signal. Um, if you're familiar with mid-side encoding, we can listen to just the left, just the right. And one feature I really like is the ability to immediately invert the right and the left. And I was doing that a couple of times just to see whether the correction I'd made to the left-right balance was making the image shift. I'm comfortable with that um, as I have it, so let's move on. I'm going to leave the bass and the mid-range on that song for the time being. In fact, let me do a comparison with the other songs so we can see how it fits. And now the song that's sounding the most like the odd one out to me is this song over here, Hide. So I'm going to do some EQ there. I'm, I'm thinking I really need to fill out the texture there. There's a lot of very low subby bass. I want to fill out the low mids. I want to tame that really aggressive high frequency, although possibly if I boost the low mids first, that won't be so necessary. Let's see what happens. And I'm actually going to go for a high-end cut first. That's the thing that really is leaping out to me about the song at the moment, is just that there's lots of energy up in that top end. I'm going to try a high shelf filter. Let's have a play with that. One nice thing about Fab Filter is that you can solo the bands just by clicking this here, and then you can sweep to change the frequency, which is a nice feature, especially when you're training your ear to hear EQ. Actually, now I listen to it, there's not a huge amount of sub bass. There's kind of quite a lot of kind of that 100 hertz kind of frequency. So I'm going to go in a bit lower and see how that affects things. That's sending the VU meters crazy, and you can also see on my dynameter plugin over here, which uh, measures or gives you a way of getting an idea of the microdynamics of the music, the difference between the peak and the loudness. That's getting a bit hot now, so I'm going to start tweaking the level of that in a minute, and probably all the songs. Um, let's keep going for the time being. a little bit of presence back in there with this boost here at what that's 3.3k and you can hear the general strategy i'm using here which i'm sure you've come across before which is basically to start boosting the eq and sweeping around until it feels right then adjusting the q and the gain so that it starts to work for you so now let's think again about the level because this is the way that my mastering process works set the level set the eq and then think about the level again because just like changing the loudness changes the way we hear the EQ, changing the EQ changes the way we feel about the loudness. So let's try adjusting this gain again.
So the VU meters are still kind of pulsing away there because they're very sensitive to the bass. I find that a really interesting, uh, a useful property of VU meters, incidentally, which is you can balance the way that things sound with the way that things read on the meters. Um, in this case, it's telling me that this song is pretty bass heavy because it doesn't sound hugely loud in comparison to the others, but the, the needles are going higher. Whereas if you think back to the way that the, the more punky song sounded when we first listened to it without that bass in there, it sounded pretty loud, even though the meters weren't going nearly as high as this. So it's one of the kind of quirky things about VU meters that you have to learn if you want to use them. Loudness meters like this one here are less sensitive to this kind of effect. I find it quite helpful. I'm not too concerned about the fact that the meters are, are pushing high because of that bass, particularly since Dynameter over here, which uses loudness units to make its calculations, is giving me a minimum PSR reading of eight. I don't recommend you go below that. So I'm pretty comfortable with that song. Now let's listen to that as compared to the other two. Now I'm going to use a little top tip. Uh, I'm going to listen to this at a dimmed level. One of the first things I teach on the Home Mastering Masterclass, which is the online course I do helping people get better results mastering their own music, is how to choose your monitor gain and how to connect monitor gain with the loudness that you're aiming for. There's not time to go into all of that in this video here, but I usually use the dim button on my mixer to drop the level by 12 dB. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another one of those gain plugins and I'm just going to dial in a drop of 12 dB there. And I'm going to be able to bypass that in and out when I want to listen to the gain at a reduced level. So now I'm going to do the same thing, compare these three songs, but listening with the gain at lower level. I find that's a very effective way for deciding whether the loudness changes you've made are correct. comfortable with that. I'm hearing that I would like more meat in the guitars on this final song here, so I'm going to go back to the EQ for this. Now I'm going to listen to that at the original gain. So if you turn your monitors up, watch out because the level's about to go back up. So you can hear that I've decided to reduce that change slightly. When I listened to it at the dimmed level, it seemed right. I brought the level up and my opinion about the EQ changed, which is exactly the effect I'm talking about. It's why level is so crucial for these things. Our ear is quite sensitive in this mid-range. That's going to make the track sound louder. So now I want to think about the, the loudness of this song again. This is not a new wave. This is just a quick phase. revolution. sounding a bit loud to me, so I'm going to pull the game back slightly. So I'm feeling happy with that at both the dimmed and the full levels. The one song we haven't looked at yet is Healing by Patrick. 
I've got to say, I'm really liking the way this song sounds. There's a, a big, deep, subby bass thing that happens, but it feels musically appropriate. I like it. In comparison to the other two, maybe it's now starting to sound a little bit soft. I quite like that softness. I think I think these three songs are now kind of close enough or balanced enough that they could sit together in a playlist or on a, a compilation album or you know a film soundtrack, whatever, because they're obviously a pretty diverse selection. But I'm just going to experiment with the EQ on this song and see how it fits in with the others, see whether balancing it even more has an effect I like or not. This song is still sounding really toppy to me. I'm going to come back to it. I'm quite happy with that change. This is another important concept in mastering, is context. Sandwiched between these two songs, I think that song benefits from that, that presence lift that I gave it, and it's not making it sound harsh or aggressive, it's not taking away from that nice, mellow, soft feel that the song has, so I'm going to go with that for the time being. Now in comparison to these two, this song here I think needs a little bit more EQ work. Let's try that.
I'm starting to be really happy with those songs now. If this was a real mastering job, at this point I would be thinking about dynamic processing for each one, maybe to try and pull the mixes together a little bit, but I think you'll agree that's been a really successful process. You know, we've got three very different EQ curves for each song, and that's a fundamental point of mastering, incidentally, is a global setting over a whole bunch of songs is not going to help anybody. You need customized settings for every song. It's something I talk about in one of my favorite ever blog posts, which I call the heart and soul of mastering. It's the different approach, the different EQ curve that we have for each of these songs that is really bringing them together. Yeah, there are some similarities between them. In fact, there's some quite interesting similarities between this first and this last song, but a completely different EQ for the for the middle one here. Overall, the meters are showing the levels as being a little bit hot. I think I'm going to go back into the Pro-L and remove that 1 dB gain boost that I have in there. I quite often like to start with a small boost to start with so that it's nice and easy to pull back at a later point. I can reduce the level of all of these songs individually, but that may get us where we need to go. Let's try it. pretty happy with that i think you know that last song got down to psr 7 difference between the peak and the loudness of only 7 dbs that's at the loudest possible point of the song there's that repeating guitar riff kind of drone sound in there the rest of the song is more dynamic i'm comfortable with that uh, we have an overall integrated loudness reading of between minus 11 and minus 14 for each of the three songs which is bang on for an optimal setting for online streaming these days that's it's another thing we don't have enough time to go into in great detail in this video, but if you head over to my blog at productionadvice.co.uk, there's a ton of information there on that topic and how you can choose the optimal loudness for your music. So let's just remind ourselves one more time about how the sound of these three songs compares before this process and after. Hopefully that shows you what I'm talking about, how much power there is just in manipulating level and EQ. There's so much more consistency, so much better balance between those three songs just from those simple changes. In real life mastering this, I would probably use some dynamic processing. I might get in there and do a little bit of stereo image tweaking on some of the songs. But nine times out of ten, all you need is EQ, compression and limiting to get a fantastic sound mastering the widest possible range of material. So like I say, mastering is simple. It's not easy, it takes a lot of practice, but it's simple. And the simplest tools can give us a huge amount of control and ability to improve the sound of our music. So there you go. I hope that was helpful or interesting or useful in some way. There's a load more information about mastering in general and also about mastering your own music on my website productionadvice.co.uk please do head over there and take a look uh, make contact on social media you might like to listen to the podcast which is at themasteringshow.com um, 
Yeah, and good luck mastering your own music. Thanks for listening.